Hey, I'm Joel, and I'm here with Bill of Punish Props Academy. Academy, that's mm -hmm. the best way to say it. As you know, on my channel, I made some filament shelf brackets, and they actually worked really well. I've asked Bill if he could help me test the strength of these. We have a crane scale, and we're gonna see how much downward force each of these can take at the end. Because in the first video, I said the standard PLA one, which I believe was one of these. This is HTPLA. It withstood 21 pounds before I gave up. Mm -hmm. And I figured that would be interesting because we have Nylon X, we have Matter Hackers Rhino, we have HTPLA, we have regular PLA, we have PLA that's been sent through the Morse Struder. So it's a 1.2 millimeter wide extrusion, 0.6 millimeters tall. We spent a little more time building our testing apparatus than the last time we did a, a strength test. So this is, <laughs> this is made from two by fours. And I just had a, a bunch of two by fours laying over there. We uh, drilled some holes in it so that we can attach our shelf brackets uh, consistently in the same spot. And then we use some screws to attach cross member. Yes. So that it stays up. And then a angled piece right there. And this will definitely not give up before these. Right. I say that now. Well, we, I mean, if it, one of these lasts better than my two by four apparatus and I will be impressed. Well, the, we wanted to provide something very similar to what it would be if it was attached to a wall. And so we're using, a, a, I mean, a two by four, a decent mm -hmm. sized piece of lumber. And we have this angled piece right here so it can withstand more of that downward force. And we've got a bracket or a, a board on the bottom that'll keep it from going side to side. And then <laughs> we've got screws going in from the back and we can nut the brackets on and off because we need to do more than just one. It's not going to be a permanent attachment. Mm -hmm. It'll be much, much easier. I mean, that one's ready to go. It is ready to go. Uh, but I'm gonna do this because we're gonna do this here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hey, I'm Joel and I'm here with... Uh, that was ready. Start and over. I... <laughs> now begins the best part of this video because we're just gonna get right into breaking things. We already have a bracket on the... Uh, what are we calling that? A jig? The apparatus. The apparatus. Like capital T, capital A. The apparatus. The apparatus. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> we have the crane scale on the end of it. This is Polyalchemy Elixir, and this is printed using the Lulzbot Morstruder. It's almost solid plastic. And so it's, I mean, if we're gonna test with what I think is going to be the one that isn't going to fail or that is going to withstand the most amount of uh, weight on it, I think it's going to be the one. one of those. But I'm curious, what do you think out of these here? Because we have PETG, we have the Nylon X, which is a carbon fiber nylon. We've got Rhino, which is a copolyester. We've got uh, the PLA, we have the HDPLA. Do you have any thoughts as to what you think will withstand the most downward force? So I haven't done a, a ton of different printing with a ton of different filaments like you have, but we built a Probius robot for BlizzCon yes, last you, yes, year. Yes, you did. And uh, the, the pieces I 3D printed that were structural, I printed out of nylon. Okay. And they were nigh indestructible. <laughs> So my money's on, are these the Nylon X? No, this, or which one's uh, Nylon X? This one, we, have, one, right we have one Nylon X. My money's on this one. Boy, that is light. I know, oh, yeah, the, there's really not yeah. a lot of weight to it. You think this is it? That's, that's so, yeah. We'll save this one to the end though, because we only have one. Okay. And one of the things people are gonna probably ask, looks so good too. why don't we push down here? And the whole point of the bracket was to support weight equally distributed among these two points. Right. And so that's why I think still pulling down on one point is going to give us an accurate representation sure. of the strength. Or at the very least, we'll just make sure we do the same thing to all of them so that we're consistent. Yeah, which is gonna be the, the on the end. end. Yep. And in order to capture the weight displayed on the scale, we have a Sony RX100 Mark V. Yep. And the scale, when you're pulling down, it's going to give you a measurement, but it's not going to maintain the highest measurement when something breaks or when you let go. So that way, what we can do is record at a high frame rate and once it gives way, we hit stop on the camera and then we just go through the footage to find out the number that the scale read before catastrophic like failure. Right before it broke. Or before we give up. Yes. Do you think there's going to be, some of these pieces are going to be stronger than us? Are you saying that the, there's a potential that one of these can withstand the full Joel? If this one withstands a lot, I want to put this on the floor and I want to stand on it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's going to result in pain and sadness, but what doesn't in life? Yeah. Let's get to testing. So we I'm only going to, gonna, on. so we got to turn it on and then we got to make sure it's, uh, it's in, it's in pounds. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. You're going to rack your knuckles. 
<laughs> didn't break. The wood is starting to give before the plastic. <laughs> you have to break it, Joel. I'm, well, I'm trying. I'm going to hurt myself. Oh, hold on. You're right. The wood is, the is wood, going. Yeah, the wood's giving before the... So, I'm going to eat my words. Uh, i got to put some more screws in this. Okay, put okay. more screws in. Okay. <laughs> This bracket, Polyalchemy Elixir, which is essentially solid plastic, uh, I was able to put 70 pounds of downforce on it, and the wood was giving way. The, yeah. connect, the, the screws into the wood were giving way before the plastic was even really bending. Okay. And uh, We also should put some sort of padding down here, because you're gonna smash your hands down do, there. Well, do we have, any, do we have a, a, a ratchet? Yes. Because we could put a, a, we could ratchet to this, right? We could put a little, a little eyelet here. Yeah, that's way smarter. Because then my, my little, my little venison fingers won't get hurt. Haha! <laughs> Look what Bill did. So we, we've sturdied up this part because. Uh, I mean, this is my sturdier. first design. I mean, this totally... is totally the original first design. We've got a bolt, a bolt through here. Hopefully, there's enough material to hold it, and then we've got a ratcheting clamp, ratcheting strap, 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 ratcheting strap, strap ratchet. Here. A strap ratchet attached to the crane scale, which we can then just ratchet down and hopefully find out how much force it'll take. Yep. And it's zeroed out, right? We're at we're at zero pounds. We're at zero pounds. So we are ready to go. All right, let me set this up. Okay. All right, ready? ratchet away. Okay. 30 pounds. Oh my, that's like 80. Okay. Oh. It broke at the top. Oh, it broke at the top. Look okay. Well, here, let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. This failed right here. So what's interesting, the, the plastic itself didn't fail. It's because how it is layered in solid plastic, the layers delaminated. So the, the, the downward pressure was actually pulling out. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how it was built. Mm -hmm. So this withstood a tremendous amount of downward force, which is great. Now we need to reset and do the next one, and we'll get that set up here in just a sec. One of the things that we're doing for setup, and we're gonna do it to all of them, is we have to drill out the hole that's being used. We're using the same size drill bit for each one, and we're doing it to every single one that we test. It's either not going to compromise the strength of the piece, or it's going to compromise the strength of the piece exactly the same across our test elements. Yep. So this is, let's see, you chose, this is Protopasta HTPLA, and this has not been annealed. 12 pounds, 20, 30, 40, 60. <laughs> <laughs> That failed catastrophically. That was fantastic. <laughs> wow. I mean, it gave. It gave a lot. Yeah, it did. And we were above fifty pounds, right? Mm -hmm. And for it, it, the plastic itself actually failed. It wasn't like, it wasn't like it bent and contorted and then twisted itself out of the way. The plastic, the plastic itself failed. That's great, this is a great result. Yes, it is. I will rate the result on this piece. <laughs> there are several. Perfect, this is Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA. This, uh, I like this material, so I'm really curious to see how well it performs strength-wise. On and zeroed, and set. Okay. Matter Hackers Build Series PLA, four top layers, three bottom layers, 20% infill, I believe two perimeters. You're at five pounds. Eight, ten. I should be more. Flexing a lot. Forty? <laughs> Pieces! Another thing I think we should record is which one sends the piece the furthest, because I'm pretty sure I saw a piece go 20, Did it? 20 feet that way. 
if, since I'm doing this, I think safety first. We should probably a have safety squints goggles, probably yeah. won't be enough for no. me. So Here's some sort of oh, no, we got a face shield even better. Yes, yes. You should put it right that away from me. But this is fascinating how we're observing the pieces bend mm -hmm. and we are observing the where the weak points are where we can actually introduce more structural integrity by adding certain parts so the interesting well i guess at the end the interesting part would be to see if we could improve the results by adding certain membranes that that are support structures well what's cool too is once you have your favorite material you could iterate on the design and just print that material or right. whatever it is um, Absolutely. So polyalchemy elixir is a PLA base, but 90 pounds yeah. before failure. And it wasn't catastrophic. It's because the layers separated from themselves. You have a couple of those, right? I Well, I have a couple of these and I have non, I have standard PLA yep. made with the Morstruder. Oh, yeah. I'm adjusting your face shield to fit my big fat head. Okay. So this is Matter Hackers Build Series PETG. Uh, four top, three bottom, two perimeters, 20%. Everything is very similar printed except for the, the more Struder. Is Are we zeroed? We are zero. Are you ready? I am set. I feel safe. 10 pounds. 20. It is bending a lot. 20 pounds. Uh, and it failed at 20. Yeah, I think. It just bent. It just bent. Okay. But that's a good result. That is a good that result. It's a good result. It didn't shatter like the... Uh, we don't have the... I didn't capture the high speed because it didn't break. Which but, is fine. Yeah. Uh, but by observing this part right here, we can see where the failure points happen and where we need to add yeah. more support in order for PETG. I like that it didn't shatter. Yeah. Because if I'm going to build something that needs to hold something, I don't want it to shatter and completely fail. That's like a, like this, when I was a kid, I got a comb that was indestructible. It, laid, it, it said indestructible, and I was like, it's invincible. But what it meant was that you could bend it, and oh. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't break. I was like, oh, it's, it's really disappointing. I thought it was an invincible comb. No, I'm sorry it, it wasn't. No, it was just rubber. It was just a rubber comb. <laughs> All right, next. Next. Okay, so this was PETG. We'll put this on the pile. We have more Struder standard PLA. All right. We've got Rhino, which is a polyester, and we have your Nylon X, which we're saving for last because we only have one of those. Okay, we'll do the PLA. Standard PLA. Standard. Okay. More struted PLA. So for those curious, this is a Matter Hackers Build Series PLA. Go figure. This one has uh, the little bits of infill. So it's similar in build to this, which held 90 pounds. So while we're setting this one up, Bill, because this is through the Morse Struder, it's a standard PLA, which is similar to the Polyalchemy Elixir. Do you have any guesses? Do you think it's going to be at 90 pounds like the previous Ooh. one, or do you think it'll be more or less? Was the that one also in the Morse Struder? Yes, it was. I'm expecting similar results. Similar, okay. Zero. Zero. Face shielded. 10 pounds. 30. Oh no, 40. Fifty-ish. It was a little over fifty. I think I had some glare on it. Okay. I'm not quite sure, but that failed catastrophic. That was a pretty good failure. <laughs> uh, a, wow. a lot of separation, just like in the other one, though. See how that? that oh thing? yeah. So it, it, okay. So it did. It pulled away right there, and as soon as it did, it was it was gone. Yep. Whew! <laughs> that was actually really cool. Yeah, it was. So, two left. We have Rhino. Rhino! Hackers, which is a, a copolyester. And we have one single Nylon X1. Okay. And so when I designed these, I didn't take into account my right angles and my triangles where they should have been. I just said, this shape looks good. Maybe it's not. What's your thoughts on this one? What kind is this? This is called Rhino. It's a cold polyester. It's uh, so the Matter Hackers printer, the Pulse XE. Yes. They all anything that's three D printed on that printer, they print in Rhino. Oh well, then that that tells me that uh, they put a lot of confidence in this material. I think so. Probably. Can you hold that down? I think it has a chance. I think it's going to perform better than the PETG. Okay. Which was what twenty pounds. Twenty pounds. Yeah. And set. Set. All right. This is Matter Hackers Rhino. 
see what happens. You keep turning it so that there's glare. Hold on. Oh, which way do you want me to turn? We're good. Okay. Okay, go. I'm not turning it. Ten pounds. That that fell pretty that pretty was, soon. I didn't expect that. Less than twenty. Less than twenty. Yep, 17.1. 17.1. Okay, I will let you do the honors because your handwriting is glorious. The, uh, but, I mean, the material did fail. This isn't a yeah. failure of the adhesion. This is a failure of the material itself. So this is it. This is the Nylon X. This is, this is carbon fiber nylon. The kind of thing you would use when uh, strength is uh, an issue. I think so. Because nylons generally don't have any, any layer adhesion failures. The when the nylon yeah. is printed, they stick to each other pretty well. I think we're going to see bends okay. similar to PETG. But I mean, look at, look at that. This is, you can easily see that if this, if this, like if there were a couple more triangles in there, we could probably, well, we'll talk about that at the end. But I think we could design this shelf to be even stronger. This is it. This is the final one. This is Matter Hacker's Nylon X. And we are ready. Ow, I just hit myself in the face. Boy, 10. Oh no. I don't, oh. oh. 17, 18. Oh. That was a lot less, I mean, it, like you said, it's bending well, more than it's breaking. Did it? But it definitely snapped. Was there a snap? Okay, yep. so, oh, there's the, okay, it's right behind here. Yeah. Oh, interesting. What's amazing though is like this didn't flex nearly as much as the other ones did. No, look at that, that's there, still. Yeah. But it was still under 20 pounds when it popped. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I really didn't expect I that. It goes to show that what you would assume might be the strongest material isn't necessarily the strongest for all applications. Right. That's, wait, 17.4, really? Yep. That's 17.8. That is, okay, 17.8. That is the same, or that's very similar to the Rhino. It looks like we had some results that are different than what was expected, and let's go over it. Let's start at the end. Let's start with still on there, the Nylon X. Right. According to the footage, it registered, what, 17.8 pounds of force before it actually broke. Mm-hmm. And the Nylon X didn't seem to flex as much as we were expecting. It was a snap. Something right. broke. So like this fella here bent in right there. And on this one, that part is still rock solid. It failed right up here. The, like I, I was saying before, the materials you would assume might be the strongest aren't necessarily the strongest for all applications. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is how so many of these failed in so many different ways. Right, the same model, yeah. but in but in different ways. Well, yeah. let's let's go right now to the PETG one. So this is the PETG model, failed at 20 pounds. And unlike the Nylon X, this part withstood the, the downward force, but this bent completely out of shape until it could no longer hold what was, uh, you know, the, the force we were putting mm -hmm. down on it. So this is interesting. And this tells me that Using this material, uh, it will still it will withstand. I mean, twenty pounds is decent, but at the same time, a few modifications and it could probably withstand more force. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we'll move to the Rhino. So the, the Rhino's in pieces. The Rhino shattered, and it shattered. It got to seventeen point one pounds before catastrophic failure. I don't know enough about Rhino to know the best applications for it. Like I said, Matter Hackers prints the parts for the Pulse mm -hmm. XE that are printed yep. in the Rhino. There was no no damage here, like that, the Nylon X. Yeah, it's interesting. This is the only one that did that. It didn't seem like this flexed much. It seemed like there was enough force to where the compression here caused it to break away right up top. And I think all of, oh, let's just double check, but all the ones that broke, broke along this piece. Yeah. Look at that, right there. Same thing right there. Yep. And the PTG for sure. I mean, this one broke on every part. <laughs> but yeah, if you're looking at a, at a place to make some improvements, this region here. Yeah. Definitely. Well, well, you know what else though? What shape is this, Joel? That's a triangle. What shape is this? That's a trapezoid. It's not a triangle. There you. There is your. There is your problem. Which I fully understand. Yeah. Yeah. 
We'll move to the HTPLA. It it completely shattered. All the PLA seemed to fail pretty, yeah. pretty drastically, but, but it, fell it did pounds. add 64.8 60. pounds. Yeah. So HTPLA from Protopasta actually having some structural integrity. Mm -hmm. Let's see, the PETG we handled. This we talked about, which was 40 pounds. The PLA, just standard build yep. series PLA, actually withstood 40 pounds of downward force. And before. in my opinion, the best failure today. Oh, that's because it just spun, right? It just <laughs> yeah. spun. It spun. You actually have some of this one yeah. on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All in the name of science. <laughs> But the rock star of the day is this polyalchemy elixir, which was printed on the Morse Struder, mm -hmm. and it withstood 90 pounds of force before it gave way. So it didn't yeah. really break, it's just that the, the layer adhesion broke. Mm -hmm. So the it's still, look at this, there's no damage along this section. Nope. Looking at this design, we could easily do some changes here where mm -hmm. we had just a bunch of triangles throughout and it would withstand a lot. But what's really great, and this is what's great about 3D printing, is to make changes it's easy and then to build a little test rig, you just have to go find yourself a bill. And some 2 by 4s <laughs> And some 2 by 4s and it would, uh, it would work out great. All right, well, that's it. Uh, we're going to conclude it. Uh, big thanks to Bill and his shop for helping. Big thanks to Britt. Thank you, Britt for this face shield, which protected my beautiful face. Um, I'll put all the information about these filaments down in the description. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Punish Props Academy, please do. I highly, I bet they are. I think they are. Could be. There's a good chance, if but you if like, you're not. If you like prop and costume making, if you like shenanigans, and you can withstand this mug, then that's the place. That's a good way to put it. That's the good news it. is that my beautiful wife, Brittany, also does videos. Her videos are really good, dude. Yes, they are. They're very fantastic. Don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. And as always, high five. Hey, okay, what's Bill doing? There we go. Let's see. Uh, that's a... uh, wait, here, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Can you hold it? I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Okay. Okay. There's the first 12 feet. <laughs> where's, my... where's the piece? Wait, where's the piece over there? It's here. Okay. 12 plus uh, about 8. So 20 feet away. 20 feet away! This is the gray one that blew up. That's incredible. 20 feet. I wouldn't have thought it wasn't in a shelf there either. Oh, it would have gone forever. Here's your part.